Hi guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about colors, which is one of my absolutely favorite topics to talk about. A few weeks ago I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any trouble with creative things such as choosing color palettes and a lot of you answered that you did. One of the things that I feel that is very difficult is to limit yourself to the amount of colors. If you are like me and you like all of the colors, maybe you have even FOMO when you're choosing a color palette because you feel like you should be using one more color, one more shade and this makes all the process of choosing a color palette very very difficult and I think I have two ways of thinking of color one way is that I love absolutely all the colors and I want to use them all at the same time and the other side of me is very experimental and I like to try what I call weird color combinations and I choose some muted colors and then I mix them with some bright and pastel colors and I end up with very unusual color combinations but I somehow feel like this kind of color work and I spend a lot of time choosing these palettes it doesn't come naturally to me but I think with experience and time things have gotten better I know now which shades of pink I like better or which shades of green I prefer and I think this helped reduce the time that I spent <laughs> trying to choose a color palette. I think an advantage that I have is that I studied design basics at university and we were taught about basic color theory and how to apply this to design and if you didn't learn that at university well today I'm going to teach you very basic uh, color theories that you can apply to your designs and it can be helpful for you to choose your color palettes so guys the first thing you need to know and be very conscious of is the color wheel I'm just going to go very quickly over how the color wheel works so on the color wheel we have three colors that are the primary colors yellow blue and red when we mix these colors we get the secondary colors which are orange purple and green and when we mix the primary and the secondary colors we get the tertiary tertiary <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce this um ter tertiary colors which are blue green blue violet red violet red orange yellow orange and yellow green and you can keep on mixing these colors forever and ever and different quantities of primary and secondary and you will get all the colors of the rainbow but that's basically how you make a basic color wheel now uh, you can choose color combinations based on the color wheel the most used ones are analog color palette which is when you choose three colors that are right next to each other. The other color palette that you can choose from the color wheel is the complementary. And this is when you choose opposite colors on the color wheel. So if you choose the color right across the wheel, you will get two colors that complement each other very well. You can also choose three colors. This kind of palette is called a triad and basically you drew like a triangle and these three colors also work well together. This is like a super basic way of choosing your color palettes. Obviously, the basic color wheel has very saturated colors and to have a balanced color palette, you need to change the value of the colors, meaning that you have to add a little bit of white or black or gray to change the intensity of the color, the saturation, the darkness or the lightest of the color and all this has technical names that I'm going to tell you because I think it's important that you remember that. So first of all, a color it's called hue. That's the pure color without anything else. The pure saturated color, it's called hue. Next we have tints and tint is when you mix the pure color with white. Next we have tone, which is when you mix your pure color hue plus gray. And lastly, we have the shade, which is when you mix your hue plus black. And this is how you get different shades of the colors that you choose in the color palette. This is what is going to be helpful for you to choose a balanced color palette. One of my favorite color combinations is 
pink, bright pink, fuchsia, green and like a mustardy yellow and if we look at the color wheel you can see that yellow and green are next to each other in the color wheel and then the bright pink that I like to use is right across the green so it's like a complementary and an analog palette mixed together to make the kind of palettes that I like to use but when I choose these colors I don't choose the very saturated colors because I prefer to choose colors that sit in the middle of the value scale so value means how light or dark your color is and when you, the value of your color is 1 it means that it's completely white when it's 10 it means that it's almost black so to find a, to have a balanced color palette you need to have a mixture of all the values that are in the middle the way I choose color palettes is like this I will choose an analog palette and then from one of those colors I will choose a color that is right across the color wheel and is the complementary color of one of those colors. I will not choose only bright colors, I, will, I like to have a mix of bright pops of color and also dark colors that balance the, the composition. Uh, most of the colors that I use are in the middle of the spectrum of the value scale. So you don't want to have only saturated colors because all of them will compete with each other and none of them will pop up. Pop up? Pop out. I don't know how to say it but you know what I mean. And if you only choose muted and dark colors then you're going to have the same problem because none of the colors are going to stand out so you need to have a mixture of light medium and dark colors to have a balanced color palette i recommend that you choose palettes that have no more than five hues because otherwise it gets very tricky to manage the amount of colors because you need to use the shades of the five colors that you settle for to pick all your tints shades and tones to complement your color palette i know this sounds a little bit complicated but if you start to make an effort to take into account the basic principles of color theory and apply them to the way you choose your color palettes you are going to start seeing a change because your colors are going to be balanced they are going to look well one next to the other and your eyes are going to be very interested in discovering all the colors that you have chosen for your palette so I'm going to give you now some examples of ways that I've used what I told you about the balance with the palette in my work so first in this painting I used a monochromatic palette and I only used blue I think what gives the composition depth is that in some areas I use a very dark shade of blue and in some others I left white spaces right next to the dark colors and in my opinion uh, this is why makes this piece work your eyes feel like they want to explore the piece and they always discover new details of contrast another example of color that I use is this piece that I did with purple, pink and purple, pink, red and green and as you can see purple, pink and red are colors that sit right next to each other in the color wheel and green is right across the pink on the color wheel and for this piece the brightest color I have is the pink I use a very pink bright shade and all the other colors were a little bit toned down so mixed with water because this is watercolor so they were mixed with water to make the color lighter and so in this piece I have bright pops of color and muted colors and that's how I feel the composition is balanced even if you're someone who doesn't like working with the primary colors that come in the in the watercolor set uh, if you feel more inclined to use bright colors that come in tubes of paint like I do when I buy my gouache knowing how to use the color wheel is going to help you with that too because you can think how to how to place that color that you like into the color wheel and how does it work with the other colors that you have available for you so I think if you mix your knowledge of color theory and you practice a lot 
you will learn how to use color better. Whether you work with analog things such as gouache or watercolor or you work digitally, you will learn with practice how to find balance in your color palette. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm sorry if I rumbled a little bit and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help you because I want to share what I've learned and I want you to have tools to improve your work and your creative life. If you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and like and comment below if you have questions and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye!